Hi there, this is Sue, Sue Talks, and welcome to my sixth episode in becoming a more effective and confident networker. Today we've got a really exciting part of the networking process, the bit where we actually go to an event and we meet some people. Now you might think that that's quite normal and ordinary, but you know there's many, many people, as I know, when I go to events, that actually go to events and never want to meet anybody. They don't want to talk to anybody. Why? Well, you know, sometimes because the hermits, or sometimes because they're scared, they, they don't know how to approach people, and the key thing is the fear of rejection. So rather than be rejected, let's not meet anybody in the first place. And you'll know that this happens when you go to events because as you arrive at the event, you'll notice in the car park, there's lots of people sat in their cars. And before the event starts, just before the event starts as a whole, then they get out of the car and they come to the event. So why are they coming to a networking event to represent themselves and their business and they stay in the car? Well, fear. Fear. What are they doing in the car? Well, they might be listening to the radio, they may be reading a book, catching up on the newspaper, they may be making a telephone call. What they're not doing is getting through that door and talking to people. And even if people get into that situation, up the stairs, into the, into the, uh, the, the event place, uh, the particular uh, house, build, business, whatever hall, then a lot of people hang around in the lobby area rather than walking into the main room. Because if they walk into the main room, well, somebody might talk to them. You know, oh, I don't want anybody to talk to me. I want to come networking. And you can see the trepidation in the face and they'd rather hang about outside. So what we're going to do today is look at some of the things that we do to ourselves to actually make those avoidance techniques and we perfect those avoidance techniques. <coughs> and also on the other side, excuse me, <coughs> a bit of a, <coughs> a, a frog. Let's see, I might be kissed with a wonderful prince soon. So, the avoidance techniques and also what we can do to get over those avoidance techniques and actually join in with some really nice people. One of the avoidance techniques I watch because I'm a people watcher. I love to go to events and have a look around the room, see who's doing what. And one of the things I see is the avoidance technique of the toilet. So imagine that you've got a whole room in there as already 100, 200 people talking to each other. They're all suited. The, there's a noise and all sorts of things happening. And you walk towards that event and you walk in and as you look around the room, you think, oh, I'll just go to the toilet. Well, you know, the toilet is a, perhaps a good place for us to go if we are going to escape girls, because that's the time when we can go where we can do the hair, put the lipstick on and, uh, and get ourselves ready. And we might meet somebody else in the event in the toilet. You know, it's not a good thing for men to be going to the toilet and talking to strangers for 20 minutes or so. But hey, girls, we can do that. We can build relationships in the ladies. Uh, in the washroom. So let's say we don't do the toilet thing, but we walk into the event and as we registered, they gave us a brochure. Huh? So here we are, a brochure. And you know, it's funny, isn't it? It's the most interesting thing that you've ever read. Because as the person looks at the brochure and look about, and they open the brochure, Mm-hmm. Oh. And they get to the back page and they read down. And when they get to the bottom, what do they do? Yep. You got it. They turn it around and they start again. Have they read a word? Not a word. Yeah. But who's going to come and talk to me if I'm so busy and so engaged with something else? The next thing I see people doing all the time is the mobile phone. Yeah. And whether it's uh, on or not, they will still use it. Hi, yeah, no, it's okay. Well, we're organizing the event, so we're getting there at 9.30 and the customer's arriving in at 10.30. Oh, no, I thought of that, that's great. Yeah, no, well, if you could do that, that would be absolutely wonderful, thank you very much. Do you know, it might not even be switched on, but who's gonna talk to me if I'm so busy talking to somebody else? You know, one of these days, somebody's going to be on the mobile phone and it will ring. Ooh, ooh, yeah, 
and then what are they going to do? But even worse than the mobile phone now, of course, the age of technology is the whole area of texting and being on your internet, on your phone at the same time. And I don't know whether you've noticed, but when people are now on the internet, they're sending email messages, they're texting people, you know, it's very difficult to hold a conversation while they're doing all of that. And I've noticed, I also look at body language and I've noticed that people have the knees bent a little bit while they're holding on and it looks very, very strange. But again, if I'm communicating with somebody else on a mobile phone, nobody's going to come and talk to me. And many people do that just because they don't know how to approach people or what to say. So, one of the other tips that, uh, that uh, show the avoidance techniques are the pictures on the wall. You know, suddenly, oh, and somebody could go to the picture, yeah, and they look at the words, who's written it, who's painted it, look again at it. They could do a whole room all on the pictures. So the pictures are brilliant because, of course, the eye contact is a lot higher than normal eye level. And so if I look around at the pictures, it means I'm not even making contact. Because the last thing I want to do is walk into a room and say, hi, girls, who's going to talk to me? Yeah. And no eye contact whatsoever, because if somebody gets eye contact with you, guess what they're going to do? They may talk to you. And that's a scary option. So we avoid eye contact. We will do anything to stop those people making contact with us. So what can we do to get over that? Well, the first thing we can do is just approach the single person on their own. Those, that person's the easiest person ever to go and talk to. But remember everything we do in networking is done with the utmost professionalism, courtesy and politeness. Always ask permission. So we just go to somebody and say, hi there, can I join you? They're not going to say, no, I don't want to talk to anybody, I want to come networking. You know, because they will always say yes. So if you say, hi there, can I join you? They'll look up and they'll say yes then you can start your conversation. There are four things we have in common with a total stranger. Four things. And these four things represent the first four questions you can ask when you're breaking the ice. The first question is, so where have you travelled from today? Because everybody at an event has had to have got there from somewhere, somehow. They've got there from somewhere, somehow. So it's an easy question to ask. So where have you travelled from today? And they say, oh, well, I've come from such and such. And you can then find out, is that where they work? Is that where they live? Is that where their client is? Um, how their journey was? Where, how, which route they took? All sorts of things. Anything to do with that journey. The most important thing in the first four questions is that you build up some level of connectivity. Yeah, You find some things in common. The second question we have is all related to the event. So what's your relationship to or how, uh, what's your work in line of whatever? So it's an engineering event and we might say, so what's your link with engineering? If it's, a biz if it's a business new startup, so what's your link in with business new starts? And then the person can talk about it. That's the second thing you've got in common. The third thing we've got in common is the host. The same person invited us or the same organisation or corporation. So, so what's your relationship to X, Y and Z? And again, it's dead easy because you've got that in common. And the final question that you could ask, which is the uh, same for both of us, is the weather. You know, when we walked in that room at that time, we had the same weather. So although you might think weather talk is just a British thing, actually across all cultures, weather's quite important. So easiest to say is, oh, isn't it absolutely gorgeous today? So, and then you can start the conversation. So the four things are really important is the get connectivity, either the journey, the type of event, the host, or even the weather. And once you've got those four questions out the way, you've then got some things in common that you can carry on and build your relationship on. So thank you for listening today. And I'm looking forward to some further episodes later on. Bye.